Hello, welcome back to our channel. In today's episode, we begin a mini-series on Kotlin collections. The Kotlin Standard Library provides a comprehensive set of tools for managing collections. Collections can be thought of as groups of a variable number of items, sometimes could be zero, that are significant to the problem being solved and are commonly operated on. Kotlin has several different types of collections that it has available in the Standard Library. The most important ones are the list, set, and map. Today's episode will focus on the map. A map, or some would call a dictionary, is a set of key value pairs. The keys are usually unique, and each of them maps to exactly one value. The values can be duplicates, but the keys cannot. Maps are useful for storing logical connections between objects. For example, an employer's ID with their position. The standard library provides implementations for basic collection types. Each of these types has two main types of interfaces. An immutable interface that provides operations for only accessing collection elements and a mutable interface. This usually extends the corresponding immutable interface by adding write options, such as adding, removing, and updating its elements. The map interface provides specific functions, such as access to the value by key, searching keys and values, and so on. Let's start by creating an immutable map. To create an immutable map, we simply use the map of construct. Within the parameters, provide the key and the value. Here, we have two keys, XYZ and ABC, and each of them corresponds to their resulting value, John Doe and Jen Doe, respectively. We can also create a mutable map. As you can see, we have a trainer's map where we are mapping an integer to a value. To create a mutable map, we use the mutable map of construct. The keys of a specific map can be of any type, similar to the value. You are not restricted to which you can use. We can also create a map using the hash map constructor from Java. Since the hash map class has a generic, you can specify the type of the key and the type of the value. Remember, when you use the HashMap constructor, you are directly calling the HashMap from Java. You can provide different values using the following syntax. We can use the square brackets, provide the name of the key, and assign the value on the right-hand side. It is important to note that all hash maps are mutable maps. You can assign the value and you can remove values, as well as reading the values that are already in the map itself. If you're using the map of or mutable map of DSL, you can create a value using pairs. Let's look at an example. Each key value pair is represented as a pair item. In our case, trainer 1 has the age 26, trainer 2 has the age 33. The Kotlin map has properties to get its entries, keys, and values of the map. Entries is provided as a property. And if you run this, you will see all the key value pairs provided. In the event you only wanted the key, you could also use the keys property. Similarly, if you wanted only the values, you could use the values property. There we have them. There are numerous ways through which you can loop a Kotlin map. 
Kotlin maps allows us to iterate through them using the iterator method. This will provide us with a list of key value pairs for the map entries. Let's look at how we can do that. We call the iterator method. This will allow us to go through each and every item in the map together with its value. There you have them. Entry 1, entry 2, providing you with the key and the value. You could also destruct the key and value inside a regular for loop. Maps also have a for each method, which provides you with two parameters in the trailing lambda, the key and the value. With that similar scenario, key and value is provided when you loop using the for each method provided by each map. You can also use either the size property or the count method to get the total number of entries in the map. The size and the count method both return the same value. There's a very special method known as contains key, and this is usually checking if a map contains a specific key. There is its counter method contains value. This checks whether the map contains that specific value that you're looking for. Both methods will return booleans. You can see that the Android key is contained, but there is no value such as 26 in our student scores. Sometimes your collection may be empty and you can check for emptiness using the dot is empty method. This method returns true if the collection does not contain any elements and false otherwise. We can see we have a new books empty map. We can confirm that books is empty. The value returned is true. Student scores on the other hand is not empty. In order to access an element from a specific map, we use the get method. The get method in Kotlin can be replaced using the square brackets. Let's look at how this can work. You can either use the get method or you can index using the square brackets. Either will work. Your IDE will always be suggesting for you to use the square brackets when need be, as is in my case. So we have our trainer 1 and our trainer 2 successfully retrieved. If we attempted to get a key that does not exist, the map will return a null value. Let's try to get a key of 20. The value resulting will be null. There is also another function known as get value, which is slightly different. The get value method will throw an exception if there is not a specific key found within the map. There we have it. Key 20 is missing in the map. We can use the add operator to add two or more maps into a single set. This will add the second map 
onto the first map, discarding any duplicate elements. If there are duplicate keys within those two maps, then the second map's key will override the previous map's key. Let us try and add trainers and students. As you can see, the school will now have four different keys with their corresponding values. Let us try and add trainer and trainer ages and see how duplicate keys work. As you can see, the trainer names are now replaced with the trainer ages since the trainer names were in the first map while the trainer ages were in the right hand side of the add operator. Therefore, the keys from the second map will replace the keys from the first one. We can use the subtract operator to subtract a list from a map. This said list is the list of keys from a given set in a map. Let us remove the Android key from the student scores. There we have them. Original scores, we had KT Whisperer, Android, and Kator. With the new scores, we only have KT Whisperer and Kator. Another way of removing entries from a map is using the remove method. With the remove method, you can simply provide the value of the key inside the parameter of that remove method. Now, we can remove KT Whisperer from the specific student scores map. It is important to keep in mind that using the subtract operator is non-destructive, but using the remove method is destructive. The subtract operator does not affect the original map, but the remove function does affect the original map. While in many cases, maps usually don't contain any order. This is because the keys are what are used to access any specific value. However, you can have your map in a sorted manner if you wanted to. You can use the two sorted map to sort the map in ascending order. There we have Android comes first and then Kator comes second. You can also create a sorted map with the given key value pairs using the sorted map of construct. Just use the method in place of what you're using with map of or mutable map of. You can use either filter keys or filter values methods to filter out your entries. We can also use the filter method to filter out the elements matching both key and value. Let us look for trainers who are below 30 years of age. The filter method does require your lambda to return a boolean value. And we can see there is only one person who is under 30 and their age is 26. We could also use filter keys 
to only filter through the keys and filter values to only filter through the values, depending on the choice that you want. The syntax is the same with filter. Lastly, we can use the map method to format our elements into a specific other type depending on what we want. The map function will give you a lambda with both key and value. And lastly, you will require a return value which will be a list of the items that you want to map it into. So we could have something like this. Lastly, we can print it out to see our mapped values. So there we have it, a key and a value, key and the value. Key, first key was one, value was 26. Second key was two, value was 33. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now you can use maps to do a few things here and there, improve your Kotlin developer workflows and have fun. See you in the next episode where we'll be talking about sets.